so I'm going to talk about the role of citizen science in the era of the Green Deal in the decade of the ocean. And I'm actually not going to give an overview of the projects because there are several projects being presented. I'm just going to go more into the basics definitions of citizen science and uh, in relation to uh, the marine environment. So seeing that we're the European Citizen Science uh, Association, I will start at the very, very basics. Um, so what is citizen science actually? Uh, it's a very young and a very old science at the same time, depending on how you look at it. Already in the um, ninth century, um, there were reports of citizen science uh, about the environment uh, being recorded. And in 1989, the term was actually first used in a publication. And there are many definitions out there. So if you look at Wikipedia, it's very basic. It's um, scientific research conducted by amateur non-professional scientists. Uh, the Oxford English Dictionary um, adds the dimension that it's um, carried out. Is something wrong? Or? Uh, carried out in collaboration with um, actual trained scientists. And then if you look at the citizenscience.gov website, um, they go even more into details and add more dimensions that is also um, citizens are inv involved in various parts. They can not just only participate in the collection of the data, but also in form formulating the questions. Yeah, so the citizen science stuff goes more into detail. Um, it's a voluntary process and it addresses actually sustainable development goals. And the definition of citizen science is actually not that easy. Um, when you look at the sort of the handbook or textbook of citizen science, um, by Mordechai, uh, they actually give 34 different definitions of citizen science. And EXA in 2015, um, in their working group best practices and building capacity, they actually created um, not a definition, but um, the 10 principles of citizen science um, and what they should be based on. I can share this happily, or most, I guess a lot of you will already know this. Uh, in summary, these 10 principles basically um, means that citizen science, it actively involves the public and scientific research. Uh, it brings together science policymakers and society and other stakeholders. Um, and citizens can be contributors, collaborators, project leaders even, and they definitely have a meaningful role in the project. Um, and they also participate in many stages of the scientific process, including also seeing the results. So what citizen science is not, it's not new. Um, it's not just a science survey or activities where data are purely collected and given to the realm of real scientists. It is not the same as learning engagement and science communication. There's a lot of confusion out there. There's overlap, but it has different purposes. And it's not a replacement for existing research capacities and monitoring activities. Um, it's not always suitable to apply citizen science to scientific questions. And it's not free, <laughs> we know this. Um, so there's always a cost versus value um, balance you have to see. And it's also not an easy option. Training citizen science takes effort and time, but obviously is also very sustainable for the future. There is different typologies of citizen science that, defined by, that were defined by Hackley in 2013, basically different levels of engagement of the citizens with uh, the scientific activity. So level one is crowdsourcing. Citizens are pure sensors, for example, on a mobile app or something. Citizens go out there and collect data that is then used by scientists. Level two, there's distributed intelligence. Citizens are somewhat informed in the question or the project or the theory. Then level three, participatory science. Um, so scientists can actually um, participate in the problem definition and also in the data collection. And then there is extreme citizen science, um, which is basically I guess what also authors is aiming for in many ways um, is collaborative science. The citizens participate in all stages, including from the problem definition. Um, and this is I, also what we're looking for in the co-creation process. And there are different models of citizen science. Um, this is basically how the citizen contributes to the research question and set. Um, so it's, uh, there's contributory where um, the citizens literally just um, collect in the data and contribute to the process. There's collaborative. Um, it's a two-way process between the scientist and the citizen. There's co-creation, what authors is aiming for. And then there's also uh, citizen-led um, DIY science, which I already heard some partners having initiative, which I find also very, very nice concept. Um, and then why citizen science important? Um, basically, 
it involves the society and the citizens as stakeholders um, together with other stakeholders that are important for also the development and the future of society. For example, um, uh, for academia, citizen science is a powerful way of creating more research power and high quality research. Policy makers, uh, it can help to build um, evidence-based policy and develop policy in a way that is important also for the real data on the ground and the citizens. Um, citizen science gives the power to educate and involve young people in the scientific process, etc., etc. And what is sort of the, in terms of coming back to the ocean decade, um, which I was given the title of the talk of, um, what is its relevance to citizen science? I'm not going to explain the ocean decade to you. Um, but basically, um, maybe for people in the Zoom, just very briefly, the, the mission of the ocean decade was to move from the ocean we have to the ocean we want. And they defined three objectives, several actions, and also they defined 10 decade challenges to be addressed um, in, the, in the 10 years. Um, to come, and in particular relevance to authors, um, these challenges is the uh, understanding and beating marine pollution. Obviously, this um, involves also the monitoring, expanding the global ocean observing system. There's projects in this direction that I already saw in marine citizen science, creating a digital representation of the ocean, skills, knowledge, and technology for all, and also, of course, um, changing hum humanity's relationship with the ocean um, in our Changing Hearts and Minds campaign. So why is marine citizen science important? Well, with the global climate change and um, environmental also change, which has um, uh, and the impacts it has on marine systems, there is constantly evolving international marine governance and management. There is definitely a greater need for advocacy and stewardship of the marine environments, uh, and these are all reasons um, to drive and strengthen the role of marine citizen science in particular. Um, the marine waters is the largest water body um, or actually surface component of the Earth system. It stabilizes the climate, supports life on Earth, including human life. And um, from looking at the literature, also the project out there, um, there seems to be a weaker presence of citizen science in marine environments compared to terrestrial environments, probably due to the vastness of the area to be covered and also the problems of accessibility. And given the scale of the environmental threats to the main environment and the relatively limited resources we actually have to fill these knowledge gaps, citizen science presents a huge resource and opportunity for uh, marine science. So just, Alan, you already showed this yesterday, but I think it fits here well, or actually I already had the slide. Um, so basically when you look at the um, a number of projects, um, uh, or I was looking also for surveys on what are out in terms of projects, what are out there in the marine realm. Uh, fresh water is very well covered, but in terms of the marine science, not so much. So this uh, basically the first graph is the number of projects and number of participants. Um, it comes from one particular survey in 2020 that uh, looked at North Sea projects and adjacent areas. And you can see uh, in the last uh, 15 years, it's been uh, growing really, really rap rapidly. It was the first analysis of this kind of overview analysis of projects, uh, and there's no data available for all marine regions yet. But um, it's like just looking at projects and uh, also at the literature, uh, it is assumed that uh, likely marine citizen science is omnipresent all over the continent, which I'm sure we will find in our mapping strategy. And then when you look at the level of participation, in these North Sea projects, um, Alan also showed this, it's mostly crowdsourcing projects. Um, they also, so it's, um, uh, they also tend to attract um, actually the most citizens because it's more, it's easy and less, uh, least time consuming, I guess, to participate. Um, in terms of challenges and opportunities of citizen science in general, I'm sure you are well aware, maybe people in the Zoom are not, so I'll briefly describe. So the recognition of the scientific value has been questioned um, of citizen science. Um, there's obviously the question, we also addressed this yesterday um, in terms of standardization, the scientific rigor and data quality that citizen science can generate, um, then the difficulty to involve all, all sectors and uh, uh, all uh, of society, basically, um, the broadest spectrum of citizens in the projects, and um, that often there is, uh, first of all, once projects are over, there's not always a guarantee there will be a sustainability for them. And also, even if you find something with citizen science, there is no guarantee that policy or, um, or funding will be given to address these issues. 
in terms of opportunities, um, citizen science can generate timely data from very dispersed disper sources that scientific teams cannot generate, of course, has the power to address uh, large knowledge and funding deficits. I am not fully on board with the statement um, for the funding. Um, it educates the public and creates stewardship and agency in, term, um, in regards to environmental policy issues and uh, is also an instrument of participatory democracy. Challenges in marine citizen science. Um, uh, marine citizen science encounters challenges not faced by terrestrial problems, for example, safety, also the cross-border nature, so cultural issues. Uh, logistics, especially the accessibility of the environment is a, is a big problem. Equipment needed that is maybe more heavy or bigger or more expensive than for smaller and shallower water bodies. And this is just um, uh, a graph um, to show the relative proportions of marine studies and in terms of which marine zones they were carried out. So, and the, as you can see, the continental shelf and oceanic is, is very low because I guess also the environment is harder to survey. And there are some other um, uh, parts uh, that are like the percentages is quite low compared to other more accessible zones. And there is, well, at the time this paper was published in 2015, they said there was no dedicated database on marine citizen science yet. There are starting initiatives which we also have to look at um, when we uh, do the mapping for otters. Then, in particular, because it's also very relevant to otters, the so citizen science challenges regarding data quality. So there are many, of course, the skills and the, how you educated the citizen science um, um, directly reflects on how they will take samples. Um, will they apply the toolkits well? Will they really record the data well? Will they actually measure the right thing? Um, how consistent is it between people, etc., cetera, etc.? Cetera. Then habits of people, which is also influenced by culture and where they live at, and for example, also social. Um, uh, classes um, can lead to bias or lack of neutrality um, towards issue or sampling and also under unrepresentative sampling effort overall. Um, there are mitigation procedures for all of these points, um, but it is still a big problem and we need to really well define for others um, what we mean with this. And just here I found this um, graph they looked, uh, they tried to compare how a trained scientist um, versus a community member, so a citizen scientist, collected um, data or was recording reduction over time in terms of bird species, mammal species and resource use. So the trained scientists um, recorded always a higher reduction, which is, um, I guess, uh, to be expected, but um, the trend is kind of the same. Um, and in terms of the error bars, I was quite surprised. I somehow expected <laughs> the, the trained scientists <laughs> to be uh, with uh, lesser error bars in terms of the observations observed, but um, yeah something to keep in mind. Then there was a, uh, the European Marine Board that published a position paper, I think in 21, um, in terms of uh, what types of marine data are amenable to citizen science. So I've just put a list here, you don't need to read, but it's basically for on land and the shorelines, uh, shallow waters and deep waters. Um, uh, what are good, basically good data types to get citizens to um, to uh, record or monitor on the environment? I think this is something we um, should definitely also look into and maybe make our own recommendations for otters. And then um, they also um, gave recommendations for marine citizen science. Um, so basically, in the short term. Uh, we need to understand the wider benefits um, which we're doing. Um, it drives good practice. Um, we need to build competencies and also cultivate the ocean literacy, of course. This, these are all main goals from Otter. And in terms of long-term action areas, um, they, <laughs> they uh, recommend to create a European marine citizen science platform, voila, right where we are um, and what we're going to do um, uh, in that direction. Otters, better funding opportunities, improved data management and also supporting marine policies. So Otters um, directly fits into all of these recommendations. And then just because we touched on it yesterday, um, ocean literacy, and that uh, this is also one of the goals to, um, of authors to implement this in people. Actually, I think in 2015, um, in a, in a co-creation workshop with citizens, um, these seven points uh, or core principles um, that uh, were defined that every citizen should know once they leave um, secondary education. And so it's already something out there. Um, 
And not knowing this was deemed to be a significant barrier um, to the development of marine citizenship. So I just put it here. I think this is also something um, we need to take into account for otters, for our educational campaigns. And then just very briefly um, uh, on EXA and how it's involved in citizen science and then obviously uh, citizen science in the marine environment. So EXA was born in 2014. It's by now uh, an influential association of citizen science in Europe that advocates public participation in science. I showed this slide briefly yesterday. So EXA has over 240 members, individual institutions from 40 countries. Um, EXA empowers citizen scientists also by promoting scientific literacy in the democrat uh, democratization of science. It connects the citizen science community through various ways, social media channels, the platform, the newsletters, etc. It's an advocate for citizen science and tries to define best practices. For example, these 10 principles of citizen science, the characteristics of citizen science, white papers, etc. And um, it, uh, it strives to be the European reference point for citizen science um, through various actions and it also provides tools for training um, that are hosted on the EU citizen science platform. In 2023, we have 14 Horizon 2020 projects running involving 33 countries. Um, and over 20 topics. Um, this is just a geographical mapping of the projects um, EXA is involved with. So a lot obviously centered in Europe, but we also have um, uh, projects on other continents. And then this is the platform we were talking about that's also in the author's proposal. Um, basically, this is what uh, the website looks like. So um, right now there's more than 240 projects on there and, 200 and more than 200 um, training resources. This will also host the Citizen Science Hub um, for work package uh, three and um, there's training modules on there there's a, cal uh, a calendar webinars are being posted there's also resources in terms of uh, what is a good citizen science project how to engage citizen science etc so it's a growing uh, a really good growing resource and um, that will also be of use to authors um, then EXA has working various working groups as you raised none on water or um, but uh, for sure in relation to authors we will contact the citizen science networks working group the ECS platform network group, and the project data tools and technology working group and then as we see fit we can also um, have feedback or um, uh, contact the others and then that was it for me.